Hello everybody, my name is Farmer Phil and in today's video we are going to mow for our second called the silage. So we have 38 acres to knock, maybe knock half of 12 acres, we're not sure on that yet. We'll have to see how we get on, but we're going to go knocking. So I have the mowers on, mowers grease, mowers sharpened, all is done now, so it's just a matter of starting knocking meadows. So one big 38 acre field, that's all we have for second cut silage. It was the only bit we put out some fertilizer on, we didn't put a lot on it, but we put some fertilizer on it. And then the other silage ground we'd normally keep for second cuts, we didn't, we, it either didn't get fertilizer or because we cut back fertilizer on the rest of our grazing ground, we actually ended up having to graze a fair bit of what we normally cut for second cut. So it's left us with just the 38 acres. We have 12 acres and we're half debating whether we mow the half of it or we leave the half of it to go on and maybe bale it later because it's not over heavy at the minute. But without further ado, we bail on down to the field. And also in this video, as it's going to be our last, well, unless we go mowing with it for other stuff, but this could be one of the last albums with the mower and I've mowed a lot of ground with it. So I'm going to give it the full review. I think somewhere around the six to 700 acres is what I've mowed with it now. So I'm, I'm well familiar with them now at this stage. So anyways, we'll be on to the field. Here we are with our grass, our big silage field. And it is, what can I say? A little bit disappointed. So it looks massive crop of stuff very seedy but if you look at the sole of the grass there's very very little for whatever reason for whatever reason like you see i walk through there the sole of the grass it's not very long but there's this huge crop of trunnions on it or stems seeds so it's a bit weird how that happened and like it doesn't matter where you go in the field it's all the same you walk out stemmy good leafy base to it but not not what you'd normally expect. You expect like a good dense ward, but it's very strange. It's the second time I've seen that this year, or for the second cut, we've two second cuts. Well, this is the second one, but the first one was the very same. Bit weird. So anyways, we're going to be doing something different in this video. We are going to be making use of them groupers at long last. So I'm going to get myself set up. So now we're in our front mower. We're going to make a few adjustments on the back to be able to group what we think we need to do. And um, Father Phil's actually gonna come up and see how it works because the bit I done the last time was a bit lumpy. He thought so he wants to see what I'm doing to um, just make sure that that's not the case. So I have a few things I want to change there just to change it, probably change my speeds. The bit I done the last time was just for a bit of fun, more so than actually want to test it out. So hopefully now, he's happy with it so the reason we're grouping this and we've never grouped anything before is normally speaking farmers want their grass to dry out as much as they can before it gets lifted with the harvester so to do that they usually leave it out flat maybe run a tether through it but what's different about this our second cut and this time for us is because we're putting it on the whole crop we don't really need it dry the reason you dry out your grass is to get rid of the moisture out of the grass, which means you have less effluent, which means you have less nutrients leaving the pit. But because we're putting whole, there's whole crop underneath our second cut, the whole crop will absorb, the straw in the whole crop will absorb basically all. I've seen us cut silage here, and in basically in the pee and rain, and there was never any runoff off the pit. It means that we can group this. We know we don't need to dry it out. It saves having to send row to row this tomorrow. And it means that we have an extra person on the draw to get the job finished sooner. And also that extra bit of weight that will be in the silage because there'll be that much more moisture in it. It'll also help pack down the whole crop in the pit, which will help preserve it. Also that extra moisture, which will be absorbed by the whole crop will what have I to do now? Right, I might have to figure out a few things here. But that extra whole crop, that extra weight and that extra moisture that will run into the whole crop will help preserve the whole crop too. So that's what we'll be looking for. Change that, I want these pointing straight down to get the floor grass to fall straight down onto the belt rather than hitting the back. So this one needs to be adjusted a little. If I can 
and you can get a span around them. It's going to be interesting to see actually group in the whole field how they work out and look quite cool from the drone. Also steer all that's engaged so yeah. I'm going to give myself some trusty spanners. Also I want to give a big thanks to the Duffy family. They dropped up a toolbox for the 64.99 to come up to visit us and they dropped up a toolbox for us and not only that but they left me in a few goodies a few tools so now i have tools with my tractor i don't need to have them in the tractor i have a toolbox i just don't tell anyone else that there's tools in it because they'll end up getting taken over and put to other tractors so big thanks to them for dropping that up the more times i've already been to it when i was working is yeah brilliant anyways let me make a few adjustments and we get grouping it's time to light it up see what happens so I made a few adjustments, I've made the, the extra plates in the back, turn it down, try and make sure it throws the grass onto the conveyor belt, or the grouper, we have lift off. Drop the front mower, we start moving forward, and we get to where my front mower is, drop the side mowers, so that they group. straight down so I'm going to lift up the the yoke that goes with the, the thing that goes around the conditioner see can I throw it straight down and um, see does that make a difference just to not have a lump and it seems to be hitting the back falling down and coming out and coming out and coming out regardless of the speed I'm putting there so another adjustment we'll see how we get on and we are motoring so we are grouping away here father Phil's been out he's happy with our motor how she's going, so he's happy. She's not looking Everything's going fine. So now it's just a matter of getting it on the ground. He's actually he said himself. Well, I I'd like to see more on it, but then as he was saying, um, we put out a bag of fertilizer. That's all this was a bag of fertilizer, and he's quite happy with what's on it for how little we put back on it. So. Now to actually get using the grouper, see what all the fuss is about. I've never grouped silage in my life before. But this is just going to speed us up and leave bro with one less job to do tomorrow. So happy days. But yeah, it is quite cool to see a grouping now. It is quite cool. Indeed. Just coming up here to the last, the fourth and final round of the field mode. The, the groupers turn off. So they only run when they're needed. There you go. So I want to be nice and to get my infill I press that button, it loads the infill, and now I'm ready to go up and down. So now when I select I to switch over to the other one, yep, yeah, I press this button here. Auto steer engages itself, lines itself up there, hopefully nice and straight. It takes four rounds of the field to get it to line itself up nice. Right, should be good now. Drop that more. So watch when I drop the back doors. Pulse water engages, and away we go! So now, we're into the middle of the field. So, with the auto steer, I start wherever I want. It's going to be straight lines from one end of the field to the other, which is what I like to see. So, we are currently burning 38 litres, 37 litres an hour, covering 7.6, 7.8 hectares an hour, and 5, 5.5 litres a hectare. So that is what we're doing there, that's important for later on, as we get into what I think of the outfit. So, we are 
leaving a little bit of a few strands of grass to remove, but they're not making it. Uh, Father, I said, I asked how feel about that, it's something I need to change. It's, that's just something all groupers do. So I can't even remember the Vernon and our John Deere's working with groupers. But um, yeah, this is my first experience, really. So, now one of the big things I have to watch out for now is I need to lift right because I was warned about running the moors into the big swarts of grass because that can cause problem, that can cause the slip clutches to go. So I hit that, then I hit that, then I hit that. Yeah. So that's that's gonna make my life interesting. I have to mind myself from that, but I have that bit more room than I normally wouldn't have, so despite that we should be okay. So engage off and steer. Do its thing. Go down if I need to. Yeah, we're good and square. Drop front more. Oh, drop that more. Drop that more. Yeah, not an easy thing to do while um, holding the camera. But we get the hang of it. Just finishing up this side of the field now. Happy days. Leave her. Up. Back on. to the other end and yes I am scattering a bit that's just not carrying the front more high enough but however but lovely lovely nice straight line so we we'll go back up this side and we get started a little bit again and that little main there the calves will enjoy that it'll be a lovely bit of sweet grass for the calves so just something that I wanted to so everybody kind of knows from old videos we used to run a vintage silage day Last year we were running it was 2019, the pandemic stopped us running it in 2020 and 2021. It's 2022, and as you can probably tell, with me group in this field, ain't no vintage silage harvesters going to be coming out here. And we did look at running it, but the thing that let us down or stopped us was we couldn't get insurance. We couldn't get insurance for the field for the day, to have, to have the day. Now we weren't looking to run in a big thing, and just same as all we'd always done before. Lock at neighbours and friends and that kind of thing. But we could not get insurance for the day. So we ended up having to cancel it. And we were very disappointed, not gonna lie, very disappointed. Because not only was we looking forward to it, but everyone was looking forward to it. We had more people ring us to see are we doing it this year. Oh, so whether that changes for next year or not, I don't know. Probably not. With that hurdle in the way, that's probably the end of our us having vintage silage days, which is very, very annoying because I thoroughly enjoyed them. But um, so yeah, we we'll start the next run. We should be going for tea soon. We're here, not committed to our holy car, absolutely flying through it. So now it's next job is get the drone up in the air and we get the rest of that down and on to the long runs.
That is it. That is the fuel mode. So, I'll just tidy off the back bores now. Yeah, just bars coming in and out, maybe not the tidiest, but they are alright. So, I get rid of all this grass. I also want to pull the hub. Yeah, I think that's uh, Yeah, roll cleaning. So I pull that hub now on both hands. Push that down that end. And that's going to clean the roller underneath that that keeps the, the belt, the roller for the belt. So I just get back in when I have this done and turn on the more back mowers, get the groupers to spin. Give it a few minutes to just clear off any grass that might be stuck to it underneath that. Just give it a few seconds there to clear off the roller. Yes, there's no grass stuck under it. I don't know what to look out for anything. Just assume it'll clear itself off. And then we fold up and we give it a review, front and back. That's us fold it up. We're just at the gate. We'll just knock it off. And we'll go through the more what I liked, what I disliked, and that. So before I mowed the hay when I was having issues with the headland management, which I don't have now, I reset the Datatronics, and at that time it had 294 hectares mowed, is what it had recorded. So that's 700 and something acres. So you could easily say there's seven I've 700 acres mowed with this outfit. What an outfit it is, but we we'll break it down into the front mower and the back mower. So the big thing with this front mower is how wide it is. It is it's 3.4 meters, it's 11 feet wide. It's wide. In the field, perfect. Just won't bother you at all. In the field, it's, not, it's actually quite nice because you have a full disc overlap either side. So you can do a little bit of maneuvering going around the headlands or around the edges and that without leaving a main. But you're on the road it's not so much the back road the back road is something that makes you the, you're fine but it's on the larger roads where you have the white line in the middle where you get people just race towards you and you're like a, hanging two foot in the head and you're still on the white line it's it's a bit nerve-wracking that way but that's probably the biggest issue i have with the front more um or not it follows the ground fierce well fierce fierce well um one other things is it could probably do with like a nice grease bank because there's a lot of grease points and they're kind of everywhere but it, it, it'd be a little bit more easier maintained if there was just a bank somewhere and you could just pop all the greases on, grease on it but that's really it for the front more it does a nice tidy job it's it's too wide to be honest and could do with a grease bank it just leave leave it a little bit easier maintained so the back more the big end of it, again, follows the ground fierce well. It's a fierce, tidy outfit on the moor, on the tractor. The big thing is it follows the ground fierce well. Like, apart from the fact that I have carried about grass everywhere, like, it's it's mowed the ground lovely. When you have farmers you've worked for, and, like, like Sir Robert and that's the end, she's that mowed fierce well, like, that says itself. You hear nothing well so so well, or if you hear it's not mowing well, you'll know about it, but when they, when you get told it's mowing fierce well, that's when you know it's mowing fierce well. I, I haven't had any issues with either front or back mower. I'm trying to think of anything. It is a little bit awkward put on, but, well, on the 99 now it is, like, you can't get in there, so you have to go over the back. This is a little bit awkward that way. Two people, it's no bother with yourself. It's a bit awkward. Um, it is heavy. It's 3.7 tons in the back and it's 1.4 in the front. The groupers, which we're just after using there, that's the first time we've actually properly used them. They're done. Look, I'm no grouper expert. It's the first time I've ever used groupers. To me, that worked perfect. Father Phil was happy with it. Do we need groupers? kind of up in the air. The one issue I have, and it's front and back, and it's more, it'd be one of the larger issues is with the knife or the bed protector. So in between each, that's the stone guard, and then you have a bed protector in between. And you can see it here, or you mightn't see that while it's a bit dark, but then on the inside you can 
well often done on the other side here's the one on the back sword knock it off you get how to check and that piece is is quite badly chewed now chewed to that extent now it's not big gouge over but it's it's more so than i've seen on the john deere with the 1060 it doesn't seem to mark it much but when it comes to the bed it doesn't seem to put much of a mark into it or no big gouge but them bed protectors seem a little bit soft for my liking but other than that i can't fault the moors and it'd be easier maintained if there's a grease bank on it that's too wide the back moors it's fierce tidy it runs fierce well the tractor's well able for it like the big thing like this is one thing I, someone actually commented or sent me a private message about it was that in, when we finished up with the pot or moors and we said ah, we'd never have any need for two and we'd never look at two and that was the honest truth if we were going out to buy moors we wouldn't even look at three moors we'd never imagined that tractor would be able to do it and we'd have to step up to the likes of an 8400 or a 7626 something like that that had have the power to drive three when these arrived we weren't expecting the tractor to drive it and it turns out that the 99 is a beast of a tractor and is well able to drive the moors and the other thing why we never were going to look at moors is i always assumed that three moors to be quite awkward especially in smaller fields we don't, we're, we're blessed here we have a 38 acre field but it's the biggest field we have to, anything to do with a lot of what we do is four or five acre fields and we always assumed tree was going to be that bit awkward and it's not one bit awkward not one bit awkward when it comes down to fuel so there's three things when you look at a piece of machinery you have your fuel savings you have your time savings and you have your costs so when it comes to time savings that's where this is where it's made up this field i just looked at the the clock there two and a half hours is roughly take out the drone and going for the dinner two and a half hours i had 38 acres mode wouldn't have got that mode with two mores when it comes to fuel usage and i can see that through the datatronics i'm burning more diesel per hour than i was with two but my fuel usage per hectare is very much the same 5.5 liters to the hectare is what two mores is doing three mores is doing the same now that varies a little bit she drives a bit harder she'll tip up to six and vice versa but it's basically the same amount of fuel per hectare so where you're winning with butterflies is time saving when it comes to the cost this is it this is like people ask did you buy them yet are you going to buy them this is why i can't answer myself because i don't know this year we can't afford to buy them you never know next year but there's a big cost difference between them three moors and what we were mowing with at home. What we were mowing with at home, you'd have change out of 5,000. Like, we bought them for feck all because both of them are old. But with these moors, 5,000 wouldn't buy a lot. And that's the truth. Will we be keeping them? Not this year. Will we see them next year? I don't know. We'll have to see how our finances work out. But I would most certainly love to be keeping them. I would probably change the front more to a smaller one just to leave life a little bit more comfortable on the road. When it comes to the back more, it's groupers or not. This is the first time we've used groupers and as I said, we've seven, over 700 acres more now with it. That's the first time. What's the advantages of grouper? For the farmer that you'll be working for, it saves him rowing so he you charge him whatever less it is to, to row. The groupers didn't seem to be any harder on fuel than normal rowan, which I was quite, quite surprised at. The other advantage is if you're in a very dry year, that where you'd be a risk of grass drying out too much before you'd actually get it cut, that you could actually group it and cut it and it'd save it wilting too much. That's really it. The groupers add quite a bit of cost to the moors. They add quite a bit of weight. And if using them once a year, they're not, you're not getting the cost benefit out of them. So that's that's really is where that is is that for us whether definitely smaller from more the back moors grouper or not that's that's where we're at with that but we'll have to wait and see can we afford to get them for next year i would most certainly love to be getting them we know the 99 is able to drive them and even if we don't get them next year i would have no issues buying some as moors whether it's a front and a side or just anything like we didn't know what to expect it to start with butterfly moors we expected that we might struggle to drive them but at the end of the day the 99 putting out 200 horses on the shaft 
she was able to drive them. How it compares to other moors for how hard they are to drive, I don't know. I've never run with other butterflies, but I count these moors quite easy when a 200 horsepower 8.4 is a 7.8 or 8.4 litre engine, can't remember, is well able to drive them. And driving light crops, 11, 12 kilometres, heavier crops, you're back down to 9 or 7 kilometres. So I don't know, is there much more to say other than that? I just want to give a big thank you to Timmy O'Brien from Egmont Hagri and all the crew there. They sent us down the moors for the season. We still have them, I don't know when they'll be going back. Maybe they mightn't be going back, maybe we might be able to come to a deal, you never know. Stranger things have happened, but big thanks to them for the opportunity to drive these moors has been surreal is one word to put it. And we'd never have looked at butterfly moors until we actually got using them. Just, yeah, it, it's it's just big thanks to them. If you want to find more out about some or you want to check out Eggman Hagri, there'll be phone numbers or stuff in the description down below, but big thanks to them. So I'm going to be on back, swap with Uncle Ian, he's probably well shattered by now. And um, or they might have actually stopped. I don't know. I don't see them cutting. But we'll be on back. And that's the silage. Second cut silage on the ground. We're not going to mow the other bits. So we might mow that for later on. Where it goes for bales or pits. I don't know. But yeah. Butterfly mowers. It's the way forward. If you have a tractor that can drive them. It is the way forward. No two ways about it. I'd definitely be trying to get, keep these if I can at all. But look, we're going to leave it at that for today's video. As always, I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday. That's it for me. Good luck. <laughs>